Looking to power your camper build? A portable power station might be the way to go. Let's talk pros and cons, and I'll show you the wiring. There are many players in the portable power station game, Jackery, Blue Eddy, Gold Zero, but I chose to go with the EcoFlow Delta Mini, mostly because of how it fits in my trailer design. Most of these power stations on the market have the plugs on the front and the back, and because of how we designed this trailer, I needed the power to be on the short ends. Even though I went with an EcoFlow power station, there are many companies that make good options that could work for your trailer. There are also pros and cons to going this route instead of the traditional battery system. The biggest obvious pro is that the, these batteries are lightweight, small, compact, and rather simple to wire in. My favorite feature is how easy it is to just unplug the power station and take it inside to top off a charge. The pricing of the power stations is a pro and a con depending on the scale of your system. If you just need a small AGM battery setup, you could probably do something with the same amount of power for about half the cost. But if you're looking to do a high-end lithium setup, you're going to spend at least the same amount, if not more. The biggest con with this type of system is scalability. It is way easier to just add batteries to the traditional system. If you have the space though, the standard EcoFlow Delta is scalable. One thing that I did figure out the hard way is that these batteries require a minimum input. In the EcoFlow's case, it's around 40 watts. That means if you have a 100 watt portable solar panel and it is an overcast day and it is not producing at least 40 watts, the battery will not charge. As far as how long the battery will last, completely depends on your usage. But I have found I average around 250 watt hours per 24 hours. That means that my battery can run my trailer for about three days without any external power inputs. Now let's get into the wiring. For power input, we have the regular shore power, which goes through the trailer, through this plug. We also have this connector, which runs to the fuse box. So as you can see, the input can be 11 to 75 volts at 10 amps. So this can handle quite a big range. The input wire runs down to this fuse box here, connects to this common lug. And then I have four inputs that it can choose from. So this first wire here runs to the external solar panel plug. So you can plug a portable solar panel in and point it at the sun. The second wire runs up to the roof and hooks to the two Renogy 100 watt solar panels. This third wire here is just an extra input in case I need it. And this last wire runs all the way through the trailer song and to the truck for the charging circuit when you're driving. Now this extra wire on the common lug here just runs to an adapter in case I need to run my backup battery. Everything on the trailer is set up with a common ground except for the shore power. This makes it easy to wire everything because I only need to run a power wire to the device and I can ground the device to the closest part of the frame. Here's an example of the power running into the unit and then the ground running to the trailer frame. As far as output power, I'm using the 12 volt plug to run the refrigerator through this extension and it's also spliced in to run the max fan. This three amp output here is wired to this switch, which controls the lights. So far there's two. There will eventually be two more back here. 
and the two out on the hatch. On the front end of the EcoFlow, I'm using all these USB ports with extensions. My USB-C runs to both sides through this Y adapter. And these USBs run to both sides as well. Here's a look at my USB-C and A connectors and my light switch. This one has a dimmer. Once the trailer is all done, I will do a final wiring video. If you'd like to stay up to date on the process, feel free to subscribe and check out this next video.